Hi guys, it's Archie Monet. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope... Before I start this video, I need to make a point. You're probably wondering, why is he wearing trolls all over his clothes? Well, I'm trying to start a new fashion trend. I need to say a very, very special hello to two very cool young men that live up in Northampton. My nephews, my triad. They've been telling me for ages, you have to say hello to me in one of your videos. So, Alfie, young man, Hello, I'm sorry I didn't say hello to you sooner. And when I left last time at Christmas, you said, you can say hello to me as part of my birthday present. I think he was showing me a bit of shade because I didn't actually get him a birthday present. Little Jensen, he spent, guys, he spent his pocket money getting me these trolls. And he said, when are you gonna put the trolls in a video? So I thought, rather than just put them in the video, I'd wear the damn things. Maybe start a new fashion trend in the process, why not? But anyway, hello to both of you. I will see you guys soon. Um, I hope you're being good. I know that sounds like a really boring thing to say, but you know, be good for your mum and dad. You're good boys anyway, I know you are. And um, yeah, I'll be up there soon. So, yeah, this is gonna be tough. Might have a few casualties here, and I don't mean the trolls, I mean myself. They are attached to me with pins. I'm not a very arts and crafty uncle. Anyway, on with the video. I really have no idea how this is gonna go with green troll hair and a green screen, but we're just gonna go with it. We're just gonna see what happens. Roll with the punches. Oh, and feel free to say hello to them in the comments, everyone, if you want to. I'm sure they will absolutely love it. So, because those two young lads are full of life, fun, friendly, and just lovely, lovely boys, really, I thought I would dedicate the Fruity video to them. Fruity fragrances are fun. Fruity fragrances are not stuffy and fuddy-duddy, and they're just a fun subject to talk about. So in this video, I'm gonna to attempt to talk about 10 fruity fragrances that each showcase a different fruit. I don't wanna just do 10 of the same thing, and you will not find a citrus in sight in this video because that's an entirely different category. And quite frankly, citruses are quite boring to me. Sorry to anyone that likes them. So the first fragrance on the list features banana. We're talking about banana. It's a bit of a weird note to have in fragrances, I think. It's a strange thing. You cannot distill bananas. They do not, there is no, banana essential oil, so it's always something synthetic or maybe a combination of things. But anyway, Dolce & Gabbana Sicily. This was a fragrance that I reviewed many, many years ago. Oh my gosh, when I first started doing fragrance reviews, I was a baby, baby reviewer with one subscriber. And this was, I think, my first ever fragrance that had, I had smelled that had banana in it. It's a very weird one. The banana in this one is paired together with honeysuckle and orange blossom, and it created this really unusual sour mm, banana note that was kind of like, without sounding horrible, kind of like curdled banana in a weird way, but something that you could wear. And I found it very unusual and interesting, especially for a designer fragrance to feature banana quite heavily. Um, I, I think it's a little bit edgy. Who wants to smell like bananas? I don't know. It's not the, it's not a solely banana fragrance, but it's quite prominent in that one, and that's why I've chosen it as the representative of banana. It was strange. Honeysuckle is a cool flower. It's syrupy. It's a little bit sour in itself. Orange Blossom has honey facets. Pair that with this creamy kind of banana thing, and it creates an interesting smell. So, banana. The next fragrance I want to talk about features Guava. It is called Antigua, and it is by Fidon Fadon Fadon, Paris. This one's really lovely, actually. It's got a, it's essentially a sheepra, I think. It's very green, it's almost herbal, with this lovely tropical note of Guava that doesn't feel synthetic to me. It feels wearable. It almost sometimes smells a little bit like marijuana. Cannabis, whatever the, whatever that botanical thing is. It smells like that sometimes, but it's also got this tropical feeling that isn't the typical coconut thing. So I wanted to showcase guava in Antigua. The next one is strawberry. How fun is strawberry and perfumes? Again, I don't think it's something that's ever distilled. It's usually synthetic. But strawberry is just one of the funnest notes in a fragrance. When something has strawberry in it, you know there's just an element of fun, I think. So I've chosen a fragrance that I own. It's called Mojito Chipre. Chipre. It's inspired by Ibiza parties, minty cocktails, but this is more about a strawberry mojito. Has anyone fallen off yet, by the way? 
No? Everyone's still there? Great. It's inspired by a strawberry mojito, so this has a really big strawberry aldehyde note. The aldehyde that smells like strawberry, not sure what it's called, but it feels really fun, smooth, sweet strawberry. But then it's kind of edgy too because it has a massive mint note and lovely woods. It's also really, really strong and it's also very, very long lasting. I made the mistake of spraying it when I got into bed once on a blanket and two days later it was still there. It's a long lasting one. But it's a really fun fragrance. It's by Pierre Guillaume, a French perfumer, and it's a really good summer fruity because the ice kind of, the ice? The mint, sorry, kind of feels icy in it. And it's just a great one. So that's why I chose it for strawberry. Apricot. This is a tricky one because apricot in perfumery never really comes from apricot as far as I know. It's usually osmanthus flower that is responsible for apricot in fragrances and I wanted to mention Sunshine Woman by Amage. Yes, it's quite a pricey fragrance but it's a real bright apricot, almost apricot blossom type sort of smell. I'm not sure what apricot blossom smells like but this perfume, I can imagine it. It's listed as a note and I can imagine that there's this fruity, gorgeous, kind of tangy apricot thing going on with a really nice blossomy floral that isn't a flower as such, it's a blossom. Because blossoms smell different to flowers to my nose, even though they bloom and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is the one I wanted to mention for apricot. It's fun, and if you like the smell of apricot, hunt down fragrances that have osmanthus in it because you're probably going to get that kind of tone from it. So yeah, Sunshine Woman. The next one is a fragrance that features plum cherry, mainly plum and some kind of berryness going on. And it's Midnight Fantasy by Britney Spears. This is actually my favorite fragrance from Britney Spears ever. I love it, I think it's so fun. There's a lot of vanilla in it, which makes it fluffy. So it's like fluffy berries and fluffy dark fruits, plum berry kind of nature. It says there's cherry in there as well, but I don't really smell cherries, it's more about dark purple berries and plum and it's really affordable it's really strong it really lasts it can get a little bit too sweet but for my tastes but if you like sweet things go for it i mean why not so that one is the plum fragrance another good alternative for plum would be dior's poison by the way just a side note the next one is watermelon yeah i love watermelon melon is probably my top three favorite fruits ever cherries strawberries watermelon no grapes as well damn oh sorry grapes and it's dolce and gabbana's limperatrice number three from their anthology collection it's the pink bottle this one reminds me of my holiday to turkey it's a real juicy woody and sharp melon fragrance it's I, a lot of people say they don't have good longevity with it, but when I wore it in Turkey, people told me they could smell me. My friend especially said, like, I can smell you everywhere. It's almost like a sharp melon smell. It's not anything warm. It's kind of like it hits your nose in a really nice way with these lovely woods. The Imperatrice means the Empress. I'm not sure what that has to do with the fragrance, but we're not talking about meanings here. We're talking about fruits. So this is my favorite melon fragrance I've smelled. I really love it. Um, it's a little bit refreshing and almost thirst quenching if smells could actually do that to you. And I think they still sell it. When they came out they were really expensive and I've seen the price drop on those things, that whole line in fact, uh, quite a lot. But that's my favourite one from that line. D&G number three, L'Imperatrice. Melon. The next fragrance features blackcurrant and it's a beautiful one by Diptyque. It's called L'Ombradon's Le. I'm so bad at French. It's the shadow on the water. This one features a beautiful rose note. It features blackcurrant. It also features a uh, blackcurrant bud, like the leafy side and cassis. So it's, it's a very leafy, fruity, gorgeous fragrance with woody notes and a lovely rose on top of it as well. It's very foresty. It feels like, well, I think I reviewed it and I said it was a little bit like enchanted forest kind of smell. That's what I imagine it to smell like. Berries, greenery, roses, thorns, stuff like that. It's a really lovely one. I reviewed the Eau de Parfum version. I haven't tried the Eau de Toilette. I'm not sure how they differ. Maybe I did. I'm not sure. I've done so many videos, I can't remember anymore, guys. But yeah, L'Ombradon's Lure by Diptyque is a lovely fragrance if you like blackcurrant. So try it out. 
The next one is a fragrance that I personally don't actually like, but I think it's a very good representation of the fruity note that's in there. And it's called Wild. It's by Jardins de Cravant. It's based on Oscar Wilde. And this fragrance features grape in a very apparent way. There's also fig in it as well. So just as an added little bonus, fig is a fruit, but it's not really figgy to my nose at all. It's a very green fragrance. It's a little bit, not. it's not like wine, but the grapes in it are sour. Um, it's got a very unusual composition as well. That's why I've put it on the list because it's one to try out if you like something a bit different. There's also carnation in here, tea, uh, oak moss. There's just a lot of different things that I would normally not put together, but it's worth smelling. So something, grape isn't usually a note that's in a lot of things, I don't think. And that's why I wanted to put it on the list as something just as an outside thought. Go and check it out. Wild by Jeannins de Rivon. The second to last one is a super fun one. It's a super affordable one as well. There is a Russian company called Brocard and they have a fragrance called Delicious Cherry Lady. It's super, super cheap. And this one obviously showcases cherries. It also showcases chocolate. And this thing is like a cherry almond thing. Cherries and almonds are always interchangeable. I say that, I feel like a broken record, but I have said it before. Cherry's almonds are interchangeable in your brain when you smell them. Almond can be represented as cherry and vice versa because they feel the same in a weird way. But this fragrance basically smells like chocolate covered cherries. It's super foodie, it's super gourmand, it's super fun. It's something that I would, if I had a daughter and she was, you know, just getting into fragrance, like 11, 12 or something, I would get her that. And the last one on the list is pineapple. Well, which fragrance am I gonna choose for this one? Uh, then, no, I'm not gonna do that one. I'm gonna do 1270 by Frappan. This is a really good one as well. Frappan, one of the oldest, they're not the oldest perfume house, but they've been making cognac since 1270, which is what this fragrance is named after. It's their inception year. They are cognac makers, but they do have a fragrance line as well. They've got famous fragrances like Speak Easy, uh, this one, 1270, among many others. They normally have a boozy note in their fragrance, Sizz, but this one is a really good smooth, fruity pineapple that's almost a little bit resinous. It's a little bit playful, it's a little bit syrupy. I seem to be smelling a lot of syrupy things recently. Or, my vocabulary can't stretch to anything other than syrupy when I smell that sort of smell. Get the saurus out. But yeah, 1270 by Frappin is really good. Classic French house, been going for years, but this one's one of their more fun fragrances, I would say. It's fruity, not in the traditional way. There's a very French elegance about it, and it's just, it's just really nice. It's really cool. Try it out if you can. Anyway, guys, that was my 10 fruity fragrances. I hope I touched on a couple of different things for you all to try out and maybe piqued your interest. Again, hello, Alfie and Jensen. They survived, Jensen. We didn't have any casualties, myself included. I don't, I'm not bleeding. It's really, really good. Today is a winning day. Anyway, guys, I'm Absalom One Oak. Below, go down there to subscribe or the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Goodbye.